everybody time metalhead weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well so things have gotten a little bit spicy today and it's regarding uh what is now tropical cyclone or potential tropical cyclone four here and the thing to make note of is of course it's track we're definitely right now looking at a florida impact but i want to also talk about how liquid of a situation this is and how this can very quickly change here we're looking at spaghetti models right now we're looking at we're going to be looking at of course its intensity and its track right now the track has it aimed towards maybe western florida and maybe over towards the big bend also it is currently forecasted to get up to about 65 mile per hour winds which would make it a mid-grade to high-end tropical storm here I do see some spaghetti models, however, kind of pushing this towards hurricane status at a given point, most likely before landfall here. Landfall would most likely be anticipated by Sunday afternoon, maybe even Sunday evening, even into the overnight here. Question remains as to how fast this will be moving and how far off to the west this could trend here. So if we go back on this screen here, I want to first show you the morning time spaghetti models here what i want you to pay attention to is notice how a lot of them were a little bit further off towards the east so a lot of it was showing a west florida in impact or landfall here and if we go over to this afternoon's models here notice now we're starting to see a few more of these starting to push off to the west here and off to the north a bit too so like I said, very much a uh, liquid situ situation here. I don't know why that's such a tongue twister for me, but very much a, a liquid situation as to where the storm's gonna end up here. Right now, I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards the big bend here. And the reason I say that is because of the typical nature of these tropical storms and these hurricanes. More often than not, with these storms being weaker, they often end up kind of going a little bit more off to the west at first and th then eventually as they strengthen they start to turn a little bit more towards the north and maybe northeast it also is dependent of course on the other features that are in the area such as troughs low pressure centers high pressure centers etc and we'll go ahead and get into that real quick in just a second here we're also going to go ahead and take a look at the environment that's out ahead of this. We're looking at the relative humidities or the moisture that's in the air for this region. As we all know, these tropical systems thrive off of a warm and moist environment. Of course, being over the warm waters of the Caribbean and the Gulf, it's set to thrive pretty well. But there are little pockets of drier that could maybe slow this down. I don't think it'll make a, a great difference as to what happens with this storm maybe as we draw closer towards landfall this little pocket of dry air could slow things down ever so slightly but some interesting things that i'm kind of picking up on here with this is there's a sufficient amount of moisture that builds in along with the system as it draws closer to that landfall so showers and storms are going to be a big deal across florida as we get through saturday night into sunday then also another thing to make note of here is looking at this GFS operational run here. This is actually leaning right towards what I was referring to, more towards the uh, Big Bend in Florida here. So like I said, a lot of uncertainty in my eyes in regards to the forecast track. I would not say that the chips are down just because you see yourself in that cone of uncertainty. I do think that there is variability to be had in regards to where this ends up. But as we continue to go forward here, I also want you to notice if and this is especially pointed towards these people that live over towards the North and South Carolina coast, this is expected to head back out and see. This is expected to head right over towards the East Coast here, and we could see some restrengthening as a result of it, of that being the case here. A couple other things to make note of here, and this is again looking towards the environment. We're now looking at the wind shear. Wind shear lightens up around this area here. However, once we see this go back out towards sea, wind shear lightens up once again. Now, the GFS uh, ensemble here has the storm stalling out. Now, I, I'm not sure if I'm quite on board with that. I do think this is going to end up getting more than likely kicked out to sea and moving pretty quick. It could brush maybe areas like Cape Hatteras. Depending on where the track goes, it could maybe even brush over towards Charleston even. 
maybe towards Myrtle Beach as well. But in any case, though, if we were to watch this move along here, notice that even the GFS operational is kind of favoring the Big Ben just a little bit more. And this is the most recent run that we've had come in here. And actually, this run is still loading. So we, uh, we actually caught this at about the perfect time, I would say. But what I want, what I want you to mainly take notice of here and we'll go back to the insult the uh, operational run here is that even though while like i said i'm anticipating more of the outcome of what we see with the operational as far as we get towards about a week out i would expect this to move off to the northeast still notice that this storm starts to re-strengthen once it gets back out into the atlantic here and a big part of why that is is going to be due to the warm sea surface temperatures that are across the board here for the Atlantic, especially the Western Atlantic. So this is the Gulf Coast right here. This is this is where the storm is expected to be here. And you see these areas where we're at about 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. So put that in perspective for you. That's getting to or exceeding 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Tropical systems usually can start to get going at about 80 degrees. So I do think uh, some notable intensification. I wouldn't say rapid intensification intensification or bombing out will happen. But in this kind of environment, this storm, I expect it to strengthen pretty quickly. So I think an increase to hurricane is not out of the question at all. And then even if it gets through Florida here, and gets back out into the Atlantic over here towards the Georgia and the Carolina coast. I do think that there's a chance that this re-strengthens, maybe even strengthens up to hurricane. And look how warm the water is even heading up towards the North Atlantic here. Still sufficient enough water for the storm to continue to thrive. Really, it's going to be down to how much wind shear is a little bit for a little, uh, how the wind shear is a little bit further up here. The thing to make note of here though is we still have a very much ripe environment for tropical systems. And as this wind shear continues to lighten up as we go further along in our model run here, I am concerned about conditional st uh, additional storms and the conditions that will exist across this region if these storms are able to get past the 60 degree west line here. So we're just going to have to keep an extra close eye on what is likely to become Debbie. And then after that, we're going to be paying extra close attention to storms after that as well, because as we know, as I've said before, we're far from done with hurricane season. In fact, we are heading towards what's historically known as a peak. So definitely time to be paying attention if you're anywhere along this coastline from the Carolinas all the way through Georgia, through Florida and through the Gulf Coast itself here. With that being said. We'll have an update video tomorrow and then we'll try to figure out the schedule with what's likely, what I'm almost certain at this point is to become Tropical Storm Debbie, maybe even Hurricane Debbie. But appreciate you guys watching. See you guys next time. Till then, take care and have an awesome rest of your night.